What are reasonable expectations for Mackenzie Blackwood and Vitek Vanacek for the San Jose Sharks in net this season? Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, caretaker of The Reef, also co-host of Western Conference Tuesdays here on the Locked On NHL channel. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably the part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day, or at least three days a week during the offseason. If you want to be an everydayer, all you have to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be talking about the goalies, uh, Mackenzie Blackwood and B.J. Vanacek. Uh, look at the stats that ESPN has projected for them. Um, and if Blackwood maybe takes a step back, what to expect for Vanacek in his first season with the Sharks. And why I think we will also be seeing another goalie playing for San Jose at some point this season. So before we get to all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, these sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is looking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So, as we get closer, start to inch closer towards training camp, uh, you know, we're about five weeks out now from, from training camp and start to kind of peek at what what the sharks are going to be kind of going into this season with and i think you know we spent a lot of time talking about the forwards we spent a lot of time talking about you know the defense but um the goalies right you know, we have mackenzie blackwood who's going to be making this you know second season with the sharks and uh talked about recently with him why this could be a big season for him as he is entering a contract season you have vitek vanacek who the sharks acquired at the trade deadline last year will be making his uh sharks debut uh this upcoming season and also entering a contract season and thought it'd be a good time to kind of to to look at what expectations are for these so guys so um we'll start with mackenzie blackwood of course who uh spent last year with the sharks and uh we'll start by first reviewing his numbers so um mackenzie blackwood last year uh, he's six foot four, just as a reminder, 225 pounds. He's 27. Uh, he played 44 games with the Sharks at a 345 goals against average, 899 save percentage. Gave up 140 goals. Expected goals allowed was 142.4. So his goals saved above expected was 2.4. Um, so he saves 2.4 more goals than you would expect for him. Um, and then with a high danger save percentage at 767. Now, some of those numbers aren't going to blow you away, right? Especially the save percentage, the goals against average, all that fun stuff. But um, anybody who watched the Sharks for more than seven minutes last year knew how important Mackenzie Blackwood was to this team and kind of the nightly heroics that he put on for this team as uh, this team was, of course, the worst team in the NHL last year easily um their minus 150 goal differential uh one of the worst we've seen in modern hockey we know right that this was a bad team but Mackenzie blackwood was definitely a bright spot for this team last year with the way he played in it especially with what was in front of him and he was typically under you know a, a barrage of shots um night in night out um <laughs> last year he he had uh 1,383 shot attempts, um, saving 1,243 in 44 games. Uh, not the biggest math guy, um, but I'm going to do the math right there for you um, in his 44 games. So he averaged uh, like 31 shots attempts for every game played. That's that's a lot. <laughs> Right, that's a lot. He he faced. He was under uh, nightly, just under massive attack by by the other team because this team was the Sharks team was just so bad. Right. Um, expectations for Mackenzie Blackwood going forward. So these stats are via uh, ESPN, like from their fantasy 
you know, they, they look at, you know, trying to kind of crunch and calculate what, what to kind of expect for them. So you're not going to have the analytical stats, like the goal save above expected, all that type of, of stuff. But, you know, it's kind of more of the hard boy. Like these are just kind of the, the numbers that they project. So Blackwood, they project to start uh, to play 38 games with the 363 goals against average and a save percentage of 894 with 11 wins and two shutouts. So he had two shutouts last year. Um, but looking at the, at the goals against average and the save percentage, both those kind of like take a dip compared to the previous season. So I'm I'm kind of in line with those. I could actually see the, the numbers being better just because I think this Sharks team is going to be better while it's not going to be incrementally better like right we were in the baby steps of this uh rebuild um right you're gonna have Mackenzie blackwood or sorry you're gonna have macklin celebrini and you're gonna have will mm -hmm. smith who are going to help provide more offense you know william macklin in year two uh you hope the defense can kind of take a, a step forward especially with the addition of jake wallman uh henry thrun in year two you know ty emerson in year two if shakir mokuma don't like there's a lot of reasons to to believe that this team will kind of make it incremental baby steps forward and where Mackenzie Blackwood maybe isn't under siege the entire time that he's in net. Um, but, you know, I, I think for Blackwood, who was relatively healthy last year, I know he has some dings and bruises where he maybe like missed a week or so at a time, but um you know, I, th I think he just he played really well. And it's the first time he was healthy for a full season. So while I can see his numbers maybe taking a little bit of a dip just because regression, natural regression, I can also see them improving. And again, this isn't going to go from like a 345 goals against average, like a, you know, 277 goals against average. Like this isn't going to be some massive um jump like that but what you know what if he goes from like a 345 to like a 325 goals against average and his save percentage is kind of you know over like what if it's like a 901 902 where just a little bit more respectable right you're over that mendoza line of 900 for him but the 38 games is interesting uh because that is a big kind of step down in, in his games played compared to last year where he started 41 games last year and he played 44 games total coming in to, to relieve somebody um, in three other games. But I'm, I think the 38 maybe feels about right. And we'll see when, well, especially when we get to Vanacek kind of what they're expecting for him. And um, because I think the Sharks are going to play more than two goalies this year. And we'll, we'll talk about that more at the end of the, the show. But um, I feel like these numbers might be just a touch, a touch low for Blackwood. Maybe this is me wearing teal colored glasses. And uh, if Blackwood, Maybe he does regress, right? Even if the team's in front of him, maybe he's just not that superhero that we saw every night, um, kind of pulling saves out of his butt type of, of situation. Maybe he gets injured again. Um, there's a lot of variables that could point to him to regress. But if Blackwood play, if he's healthy, I think we will see slight, slight improvements on last year's numbers just because um, I think the team will be slightly better in front of him. And then again, with Mackenzie Blackwood, we talked about a couple of weeks ago with Mackenzie Blackwood going into a contract season. Um, if he plays really well, I, I could see him earning a medium term contract with the Sharks. And that's especially to, as to reward a player who's played really well under really terrible circumstances and, you know, to, Put some faith into him as the Sharks continue this rebuild. And I think Blackwood, uh, you know, if he's posting slightly better numbers as the team gets better, hopefully that would trend to as the team continues to take steps forward. Blackwood could, could continue to take steps forward as the Sharks uh, continue to look for their goalie of the future while Mackenzie Blackwood kind of holds down the fort for them. So, um yeah, I, I think ESPN might be a little bit low here um, because I I just I think Blackwood has a really solid chance to, to improve on his numbers as the team hopefully shows incremental steps in improvement. So we'll talk about Vitek Vanacek and why uh, ESPN has his numbers the way that they do. Uh, so we'll get to that here in just one second. 
sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop, but as the playoffs are done, the Olympics are gone. There's just fewer games to watch, and these sports aren't sports like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app, dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right. Um, so, Mackenzie Blackwood, I think, chance to, to be a little bit better. Um, Vitek Vanacek, who Sharks again acquired at the trade deadline last year, swapping out Capo Kakinen for Vitek Vanacek, hoping to kind of uh, get lucky twice in a row with former Devils goalies. Um, wow. How amazing would that be if Mike Greer does it twice in a row, just trading for uh, kind of low-value goalies from the Devils, and they just come here and uh, turn it around. That would be uh, hilarious to me. But let's look at what Vitek Vanacek did last season for the Devils. Um, so uh, he's 28 right now, six foot 284 pounds, um, so a little bit smaller Again, it's two inches, but uh, but the weight there uh, a little bit a little bit smaller than than Mackenzie Blackwood. Thirty two games last year, posted a three eighteen goals against average, eight ninety save percentage. Goals allowed, he had ninety five goals. Expected goals allowed was eighty three point eight. So his goals saved above expected was minus eleven point two. The high danger save of six forty one. So. Those are not the greatest numbers, and that's a big reason why um, he was traded. Because after you know, if you go back, you know, the season before when they kind of you know the Devils really made a big jump, um, Vitek Vanacek was a big reason why they they played in his fifty two games played that in the twenty two twenty three season. He saved you know a goal saved above expected was five point one. Um, his high danger save percentage was uh, uh, six seventy, so around the same. Maybe not not the best in the high danger save, but you know he played much better and looked like a potential goalie. You know, at least somewhat goalie of the future uh, for the Devils, or at least someone you can potentially count on. Um, you know, then you push ahead to the next season, and he just fell apart for. Um, for the Devils, with especially that goal saved above expected, um, just wasn't the same guy for for New Jersey. So um, that's why the New Jersey went out to go get Jacob Markstrom this summer because they have a team that they feel can win a bunch of games and compete to be you know go deep in the playoffs, and they needed a goalie who they could count on and that's kind of been the bugaboo for the doubles the past couple of seasons is they haven't been able to find a long-term goalie um that they can count on especially as the games get uh bigger stakes so we'll see what happens but with that but vtech vancheck though with espn and their projections uh they have him playing 44 games with a 363 goals against average 901 save percentage, 13 wins and three shutouts. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, while the goals against uh, average would go up and you kind of expect that for a team like the Sharks, who are probably still going to give up a jillion goals this year because it's a weird defense and you have young forwards and they're going to continue to be bad. Um but I, the thing I found more interesting was that Vitek Vanacek would get the majority of the starts. Um, and I don't know about that. And while Blackwood, again, has had his injury issues, and even last year, right, uh, was relatively healthy, but did have a couple of times where he was, uh, you know, missed some starts because of his injuries. And um, Capo Kekning kind of had to, to take the, the, the lion's share of, of starts there. I still think this is Mackenzie Blackwood's net. I think one, he's got some goodwill based on the way he played last year. Um, and two with Vitek Vanacek, right? I mean, he did miss, he had an injury to shut down his season and, and he's expected to be fully healthy with the start of camp. You just wonder if 
maybe especially at the beginning of the season where it's a little bit more Blackwood over Vanacek. Um, and then maybe as the season goes on, it turns more into a 50-50 proposition. But um, I was just interested to see where they were you know, pretty bullish on how um, Vanacek would would kind of perform this season. And um, 901 save percentage, that's a huge jump from, again, a guy last year who had an 890 save percentage. And maybe part of that is he's probably going to face a bajillion shots a night. Um, like, like again, you know, as, as Mackenzie Blackwood did uh, last year. Um, and that's very possible too, where it just you're, you're, you're facing more shots. So the thought is you're probably just going to, naturally save more even if you do give up four goals a night you're still going to be facing a ton of shots that maybe inflates that save percentage a little bit uh but the goals against average does take a bit of a dip which i guess maybe lends to that theory right going from a 318 uh goals against average that he had in the 23 24 season to a 363 that's a pretty you know it's basically a half a goal jump right there um and goals against but the three shutouts I thought was interesting, especially for a guy who had zero shutouts last season. Um, does have nine in his career, so that would be a, a, a big boost in his his shutouts there. Um, but I'm I still like I said I still think this is Blackwood's net, um, just because I think the sweat e equity that he put in last year. And I know he does get. Uh, I know Banachek's contract is a little bit more, you know, there's a little bit higher AAV than um, Mackenzie Blackwood's, but. I, I still think this is Blackwood's net going into the year, and their contract difference isn't so huge where it would be like, you know, Vitek Vancek is is only making, I think it's like a, maybe half a million, maybe a million. Uh, I still pull up cap friendly every when I don't mean to. RIP cap friendly, you were too good for us. Um, but yeah, so his is, so yeah, it's about a million dollars more, which it's a million dollars but it's not like some huge discrepancy where um you know it's not like vtech van checks getting paid like five or six million which is you know kind of big term contracts or starting goalie contract like these are both these guys are getting paid in that tandem contract range um so um i i, I don't think it's uh, impossible to see a world where blackwood gets more starts than vanacek the one thing, though, with, with Vancheck is he has been healthier throughout his career. Um, last year was kind of the first season where he missed a, a ton of games because of injury. And you wonder, too, if also with the Devils situation with the playoffs where they just kind of shut things down with him. And if maybe if he was playing better and they were more competitive, he might have been rushed back a little bit. Um, but that's, you know, a, a different discussion for a different day with him. But um, I think the starts, I think the game's played is a little too high in those projections. I could see it closer. I can see it closer to a kind of 50 50 split where maybe they're both get 38 games. Um, and 38 plus 44 is 82, which uh, we'll talk about here in a minute why I don't expect um, them both to just play every game this season. I think we will see somebody else play games uh, and we'll, we'll look at those guys here in a minute but um i feel like th those numbers might be a little bit a little bit rich for me uh with with vanacek and and yes i know he is also going into a contract situation but i i still i i'm i wonder how he performs on a new team that is going to be inferior to the previous team that he was just on um but we'll see. So I, I would still take, I still think Blackwood is the guy over Vanacek. So uh, we'll talk about kind of why I think we should expect to see other people and who are the names to to keep an eye on here. Uh, as you, of course, the Sharks do have two goalies in, in the Barracuda uh, with Georgie Romanoff and Magnus Cronin. Why there's, I still think there's a third goalie out there that the Sharks could uh, try to add. So we'll get to that here in just one minute. All right, guys, I do want to thank you, of course, for making Locked on Sharks uh, your first listen. For your second listen, plenty of great stuff here at Locked on. Uh, of course, you have the Locked on NHL uh, channel. 
where you can listen to myself uh, every Tuesday with Seth from Locked On Wild. We still are pumping out five episodes a week. Plenty of stuff here in the Bay Area. Uh, you got Locked On Niners getting you guys geared up for training camp. And, uh, of course, the Brandon Ayuk saga. Uh, you have Locked On Warriors, Locked On A's, Locked On Giants. So when you guys are done checking out this episode, make sure you go check out another great episode here at the Locked On Podcast uh, Network. Where, of course, we cover your team every day. So why don't I think uh, – I don't think it's a slang – I don't – Actually, I think it's more realistic that we do see other goalies this season. So the last time these Sharks played only two goalies uh, was the 2019-2020 season. So pre-COVID, uh, when Aaron, Dell, and Martin Jones split the game. So Jones played 41 games. Aaron Dell played 33. Uh, and we regularly saw just two, especially during that jones Dell era with – um, them splitting that with Martin Jones taking the lion's share of, of starts, but since kind of then with the Sharks not really having an answer in goal, it has been much more of three. So the 2020 2021 season, of course, that the weird bubble season where Martin Jones did start the majority of the games. We've had, we saw three goalies with uh Alexi Melnichuk and Yosef Kornash. Uh, those are some names. Uh, and then the 21-22 season, we saw five goalies. Uh, Capo Kakinen, Zach Salchenko. Man, we are going down some memory lane right here. James Reiner, Alex Stalock with one start against the Preds where he got absolutely wrecked. Uh, gave up six goals in that game. Uh, and then Aiden Hill also played uh, that season. And then 2022-2023 season, of course, you had Dell, Itumakanemi play, James Reimer, and Capo Kakinen. Uh, and then even last year where you saw Mackenzie Blackwood, uh, Georgie Romanoff, Devin Cooley, Magnus Corona, and as well Capo Kakinen uh, play games. I just think we are going to – realistically, we're going to see um, three, four, five goalies start or play games for the Sharks, especially as – the season winds down, right? And after the trade deadline, when we do not expect the Sharks to be in the playoff hunt this year, again, being realistic, like the baby steps, right? We're, we're, we poured the foundation. We're, we're building things here, baby steps. Don't expect the Sharks to be competitive for a playoff spot this year. Um, the Sharks are going to want to see, you know, Magnus Krona and Georgie Romanoff. And if they go get a third goalie, at some point this off season. And we've spent plenty of time talking about that. And I know Shang wrote about that as well. And there's plenty of veteran goalies out there to, to kind of kick the tires on. Um, they're going to get some starts at, at some point, especially as the season goes on to kind of see how far these guys have progressed, you know, with, Romanoff and Corona both going to be in their second season of the AHL, um, you know, playing pro hockey, how far have they progressed and what can we see? And especially, you know, for these guys as are they going to be continue, want to continue to invest in these guys, or are they going to want to maybe look at trying to move on from, from these young players? So um, I would kind of set the over under at four and a half, to be honest, of, of goalies that we see from the play games uh, this year for San Jose. Um, and that doesn't even take into account to, you know, what happens if Vitek Vanacek and or Mackenzie Blackwood both get injured for a while, right? Um, then that's why I think that importance of a third goalie uh, this season, because while Vitek Vanacek has been healthy, except for last year, what if this is just maybe the start of him not being healthy, right? Um, and then with Mackenzie Blackwood, while he was pretty healthy last year, he still won this time, and he's also been a guy who struggled with injuries. So I still think there's going to be there's going to be another goalie added to the roster. Um, it's probably going to play a majority of games in the AHL, but is going to play NHL games. So if I kind of had to divide it up, yeah, divide it up, um, I would expect I kind of put 72 games, a bucket of 72 games between Blackwood, 
Vitek Vanacek and however you want to divide that. So if you want to say maybe Blackwood starts 38 games and Vitek Vanacek starts 34, I think that's 72, doing quick math off the top of my head. And then 10 games that you divide up to goalie, you know, goalie X right now, um, Georgie Romanoff and uh, Magnus Krona. I, I, I think that's reasonable to to be honest of who out who else we should see this season so um yeah i'm the projections i get why espn has to maybe kind of do the projections that they do but i still i i think we see other goalies this season and you should see other goalies this season um because one you need to just test out and see what have these kids learned um and romanoff we saw his development last year especially from the beginning of the season in the ahl if you watch barracuda games um to the end of the season he was easily the barracuda's best goalie and he played really well small 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 sample size but the sharks where he's just kind of filling in um but he played well in those spots and i think it's going to be romanoff's net to start with the barracuda um again who knows what what happens with with goalie X? I just I hope when they introduce him, it's like the Simpsons uh, when he was Mister X, and it was just Homer with the bag over his head, and we just don't know who. Maybe they've already signed him, and they just don't want to say it until the training camp, and then that's they just I'm I'm Mister X, and it's you know uh, Aaron Dell or somebody. It just it's the new goalie. Um, that would be amazing. Anyway. <laughs> That would the vibe. If we're bringing back the vibes, that's that's how you need to. That's how the Sharks should uh, announce their new goal. Did you say we signed a goalie? You'll find out at training camp, and just keep calling him goalie X until he shows up. But uh, <laughs> just randomly, or even make him play with the bag over his head with some eyes cut out. Or he's wearing the mask underneath, but he's got the bag over his head with just the eye things. Um, terrible, terrible idea there, <laughs> but. Or the mask is just painted like a paper bag when we're way off track right now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think though for the the Sharks though, like expect them to see they're going to want to give some of these young goalies real opportunities to play in the NHL and, and see where they need to continue to work on and see if they're potential long term pieces for for the Sharks. So um, that's going to be it for me today and goalie X. Uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing the brown bag, like just the mask would just paint it like a brown bag. Uh, that'd be amazing. Anyway, uh, we'll be back uh, later this week. Uh, we expect to, we're going to dig into some of the World Juniors and uh, Helenka Gretzky stuff. So uh, we have a, a good friend making a return uh, to talk about that. We're also going to do a nice little peek around the Pacific Division. Um, just, you know, of course, you want to see what's going on in the neighborhood. So we'll probably kind of look at which teams I think got better this offseason, which teams maybe take a step back. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk about that Vegas Golden Knights team and that uh, unprotected first round pick. So uh, plenty of good stuff coming this week at Locked on Sharks. Make sure you follow along wherever you get podcast and of course you can watch on youtube as well uh follow the show on twitter facebook and instagram um that way you know exactly when the next episodes come out uh follow me on twitter at my fry hole until uh until later this week bye friends 